various current affairs and Christian programs, including News Files, Springboard and Super Morning Show, and A Walk with Jesus, all broadcast on your superstation, Joy 99.7 FM. And this is what founder of the Salt and Light Ministries, Reverend Dr. Joy Zai says, has set the platform apart as it celebrates its silver jubilee. Listen. But my real interest in wishing multimedia the very best for the next 25 years is how I have been personally touched by multimedia, especially by the radio programs. On radio, I was quite pleased that in addition to all the programs on current affairs, that multimedia made it a point to give a place to the Christian viewpoint and to help people to pray, help people to meditate on the word of God and do a lot of discussions that are meant to grow people. That is very important because, you know, people need to grow beyond just Sunday service. And so that I really congratulate Joy FM for. And it's definitely been 25 years of impactful broadcasting. What are people talking about on social media maps? All right, people are talking about Afro Nation because government has signed a five-year deal for the concert to be hosted annually in Ghana. And I was speaking to Rudy Kwache, who's the chief executive officer of Rave Media Group, the local partners of Afro Nation. And they say that they're very excited for this. And they... They know that Ghana will benefit, but people on Twitter don't read, are, are not agreeing with him. At Kobe Dexter says, that for nation thing is a big deal. The government really try. But mm-hmm. this one says, Mr. Ibrahim Mo says, Nana is in the UK trying to woo investors. All economic indicators show that the government is doing the right thing. And at DBS Armour says, we do not want or need Afro Nation to be in Ghana ever again, please. And Toss Them says, Afro Nation uh, contributed to the year of return. I'm happy those in charge saw the intangible benefits and have made this deal. And of course, Boris Johnson has been speaking Chi. Later, we'll talk about it. And that's it for the midday news. There's more news when you log on to myjoyonline.com. Dr. Mensal Tabil is up next. I am MFR Po. Thanks for your company. So everyone says I'm a Kosia filler, but it's not like I'm nosy. Or go out to find out the latest filler. <laughs> just that i get 50 megabytes of data free after paying for only the first minute of every call and so i just keep discovering stuff minute after minute that's how come i was minding my business scrolling through my timeline and i found out coco has a new baby hmm. oh and last week i learned ken won the lottery you see ken is my brother's friend so hello look who's about to vote with the rich and famous <laughs> enjoy even more value with mtn free after one you only pay for the first minute of your call on empty and free after one and the rest is free plus you enjoy free 50 megabytes worth of data to browse your favorite sites on pair where or pair dear so dial star 315 hash to sign up we day for you everywhere you go terms and conditions apply <laughs> And I run the shop just down the road from your house. You know, the one you always come to when you need things like milk, sugar, Gary, and other things. I'm also your cow bank agent with whom you can do all your banking transactions. So the next time you visit my shop to get anything, just remember that you can now open your cow bank snap account right here. Make cash deposits and withdrawals, transfer funds, and also pay your bills easily. All you need to open an account is any valid national ID and your fingerprint. Just look out for your cow bank agents in your neighborhood or look out for any registered cow bank agent sign and enjoy easy banking with cow bank agents banking contact us toll free on 0800 500 500 or visit www.cowbank.net for more information cow bank agents banking your neighborhood bank This Wednesday on the Joy Business Van, another innovation. We'll be learning about a new service that allows you to check the history of any home use car before you make a purchase. All you need is the app. You just download the app. And then you go ahead right away and then check the history of the vehicle. All right, so, so we detect the, ch- the chassis number, yes. which is this one. Yeah. So we are going to input that and then we are going to get the history of the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. The brain behind home use car, Kofi Japan will be telling us why this service is so useful. Like if you want to buy a used car and you don't check the history, what the risk is that you might get yourself a flat vehicle. And when you get yourself a flat vehicle, 
you have to spend a lot of money to repay it. Save yourself the stress. Home use car on the Joy Business Van on TV, radio, online, and on ground. It is powered by Joy Business and supported by EcoBank, the Pan African Bank. Love must be shared by one other to answer someone's dream. Join me on the Late Night Express, Mondays to Wednesdays, 10 p.m. till midnight. It's a whole new world of romance on Mondays and Tuesdays, and a deep, no holds barred brothers chat on Wednesdays from 10 p.m. You don't want to miss the all new Late Night Express. Love is here to stay with George Quay. Only on Joy 99.7 FM. The Late Night Express. Let's love. To many around the globe, transforming lives into legacies. Live in word with Pastor Mensa Otterville. And now, today's word. When God makes your feet like the deer, you don't only have speed, you have stability. You can twist, you can turn, you can jump, but you would not fall. And David could relate to that. There were many twists and turns in his life. Many times he had to change direction without notice. All of a sudden he hears, Saul is coming against you. All of a sudden he hears, if you sleep here tonight, you are dead. But in those moments, he turned, he twisted, he moved. And he was always stable. He never moved from that into a bigger trap. Anytime he moved, he was stable, he was secure, and he could move on. When God makes your feet like the feet of the deer, he gives you speed and he gives you stability. You don't fall from frying pan to fire. You don't fall from one trouble to the other. But when you twist and turn, he gives you stability. You can have that stability. In the second part of the verse 33, David says, He sets me on my high places. I love that. God raises me up to new heights. He sets me on my high places. David saw the twists and the turns of his life as the means through which God was promoting him. Every time he faced an enemy or an attack, God used it to promote him to a higher level. Every battle he fought allowed him to capture a new strategic position. God setting you on high. The twists and turns of life are not diverting your direction and attention. They are setting you on high. When you see your life moving in zigzag, sometimes you may not see progress. But David saw the zigzags of his life as God setting him on high. From the day he was anointed at the age of 17 until the day he was fully acknowledged as king when he was 30. For 13 years, his whole life was running, twist, turns, move here, move there. Enemy on right one side, enemies within, enemies without. And yet he said, as God helped me along this way, he was setting me on high. He never saw the twists and turns of his life as taking him backwards. He saw it 
are setting him on high. You know, many times when we face the twists and turns of life, we think our lives are not moving anywhere. We're not achieving anything. Nothing is happening in my life. I'm just running, 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 running. Enemies, enemies, enemies. But David says, in the midst of all of that, God set me on my high places. Isn't that wonderful? To know that in the midst of all the turns of life and all the twists of life, God is setting you up in new heights. When God sets you on high, it means that he's also positioning you in the right place. God positions you in the right place. God's promotion is never wrong. When God promotes you, he positions you in the right place. And so for David, every turn of his life positioned him in the right place. Now the right place does not mean no more battle. Now we would wish that when God puts us in the right place, it means that, oh, no enemy. But sometimes the right place will be straight in front of Goliath. That's your promotion and it landed you right in front of Goliath. Is the right place. Sometimes the right place is in the palace of Saul, where you have a crazy king, an insecure king who wants to kill you, who loves you and hates you at the same time and wants to kill you, but it's the right place. It's the right place. God's right place is not a problem free place. God's one right place sometimes will be right in the battle field, right in front of another battle. But that is the right place. The right place in life is not where you want to be. The right place in life is where God places you. And if he puts you in the battlefield, it's the right place. If you wake up one morning and you find, "Uh uh-oh, Goliath, it's the right place if God puts you there. If God puts you there, Goliath may shout, may taunt, may threaten, but that's the best he can do because you're going to get his head off his shoulders and God is going to give you victory. He sets me on my high places. God puts me in the right place. When God puts us, is setting us on the right place, he lifts us up one step at a time. One step at a time. God knew what he wanted to do with David's life. When he sent Samuel to go to the house of Jesse in Bethlehem and anoint one of the sons of Jesse as king, God knew what he wanted to do with David. He knew the guy was king. He was king material. When Samuel poured the oil on him, he didn't anoint him to be a hustler. He didn't anoint him to be a runaway boy. He didn't anoint him to be a refugee. He anointed him to be king. But it took him 13 years to be king. Because many times we think when God calls us for something, anoints us for something, equips us for something, we will be it instantly. But God is going to lead you one step at a time, one promotion at a time. And he's going to take you to face battles right in front of you. One moment, you're fighting in the wilderness. Next moment, you're fighting Goliath. Next moment, you're fighting in the palace. Next moment, you're fighting in the wilderness. Next moment, you're fighting people in your own house. But each battle takes you higher and higher and higher and shows God to you in ways you have never known. Some of us know God as the one who wins battles in the valleys, but he also wants you to know he can win battles on the mountain top. And he wants you to know he can win battles in your home and he can win battles in the office. So he's going to create a lot of battles around you. Just for him to show you, I can win here, and I can win there, and I can win there, and I can win here also. God is not afraid of your enemies, by the way. But he's going to lead you one step at a time. 
In verse 34, David says, He teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. He teaches my hands to make war. The Lord teaches me how to fight. God teaches me how to fight. That's a very important lesson. How to fight. How to fight. May God teach us how to fight. David had no battle experience when he faced Goliath in battle. Yet he says the Lord trained his hands for war. So, but at the time he met Goliath, he was not in the army. He was not in the military. But he says, God trained me for that moment. The Lord trained my hand for war. How did God train a man who had never fought to fight? When did God train David for war? And how did God train David? God trained David without David knowing he was being trained. He had no clue he was in training school. One day his father said to him, Dave, the servants are on strike. And the sheep are in the wilderness and your older brothers don't want to watch sheep. The girls will laugh at them in the village. So, you're the little boy. Go to the forest. Go to the wilderness. Go take care of the sheep. Look like banishment. So he goes to the wilderness alone. And he's taking care of his family's sheep. Taking care of sheep is not exciting because you can't converse with sheep. You can't discuss politics with them. You can't read the newspaper to them. So it's a boring task. And many times the sheep are just walking lazily, just eating grass, lying down, sleeping, waking, you know, doing other stuff. And, uh, and that's how David was watching. It's boring. So whilst it was boring, he started... To use his time. So he would take his slingshot and put a stone in it and throw the stone. And take the stone, put it on his sling and throw it and throw it and throw it and throw it. Pretty soon he realized, I'm really good at this thing. So he continues throwing stones and throwing stones and throwing stones and sharpening throwing of stones and sharpening throwing of stones. And he has no idea that he was being trained. He didn't know. This is God's training school, giving me a boring job, putting me in an office I don't like, giving me a job I hate. It's my training. You think God is going to train you by taking you to university? Anybody can go to university, anybody can go to school. God's training is with life skills, He's a life trainer. He's going to put you in life situations. And that's how he trains you. And sometimes he's going to put you in places you don't like. But that's your training ground. May I please suggest to some of you. You are now under training. You don't like your boss. Welcome to training 101. Your job is boring. Welcome to training. This is God's training school. And David had no clue. And he's just throwing stones and throwing stones and throwing stones. And God is going to train each one of us. The thing about training is you can run away from training school. Or you can decide not to learn in training school. But if you learn, the next thing happens after when God is training you, he will test your strength. He will test your strength. After God has trained you, he will test you. He will place a task before you that draws on what you've learned. And the test will not come announced. God's test does not come announced. There is no exam week. God has not come and said, well, uh, my son, uh, this week is exam week. Prepare for geography. And learn about the semi-deciduous forest. No, that's not how God announces exam. You're just there and the test starts. 
So David is throwing stones one day, throwing stones one day, throwing, throwing, and he doesn't even know why he's throwing stones. He thinks, 